Luckfox, the embedded Linux code. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Luckfox. And Luckfox is the hardware platform that we are going to use to learn embedded Linux. And as you can see how compact this board is, and it is also very low cost. So here you can see this product that is Luckfox on robu.in. So this is a very trustable website. You can purchase it from here. And here the price is about 3000 Indian rupees. And if you are an international customer, you can purchase it directly from Luckfox or AliExpress. And there are several different vendors also from where you can purchase this. You can also consult some of your local dealers and website available in your country. And now I'm in the official web page and here they are charging about $22 for this board. And there are different variants of this board. So we are not currently including any LCD module and we are choosing this ultra board and for the wireless option i am choosing yes that means it will be having wi-fi and bluetooth 5 support and i'm not including power over ethernet or poe modules so it will cost around something like this so you can see it is very cheap compared to raspberry pi or beagle bone black so you can use this board on project which does not need powerful boards like BeagleBone Black or Raspberry Pi. For smaller and cheaper projects, you can use this board and it will provide you full embedded Linux support out of the box. The Luckfox Pico series of embedded development board, they are powered by SOCs from a company called Rockchip. And this Rockchip is a very popular and successful SOC manufacturer. And they are engaged in producing SOCs for markets like tablets, smart TVs, set-top box, and other multimedia devices. Nowadays, they are also targeting the market of smart surveillance cameras that are AI powered. They are using an industry standard processor for their SOC and this processor architecture is ARM. So here you can see on the arm.com that they are the partner of arm and they are licensing arm architecture for their SOCs. And currently they are focusing on this market that is AIoT and this AIoT stands for artificial intelligence or AI of things. So the aim is to bring AI to small embedded devices like a surveillance camera. That means now AI will not be limited to big servers and workstation only. They can be deployed to small and low cost products like AI camera. And there all of the AI processing will be done in the edge. That means on the edge device. The data will not be transferred to any cloud application or anything. They will be completely processed on the edge. Now let us have a look at Wikipedia, what Wikipedia is telling about Rockchip. So Rockchip is a Chinese fabulous semiconductor company based in Fuzhou, Fujian province and it has offices in Shanghai and Beijing. It designs system on chip SOCs. So actually these SOCs are the big brothers of microcontrollers or MCUs. They are much more powerful compared to MCUs. So whenever we are having an application that demands power that our microcontroller cannot supply, then we have to transition to SOCs from microcontrollers. And here they are telling that they are using the ARM architecture license from ARM holding for their majority of products. So they are also telling that Rockchip was one of the top 50 fabulous IC suppliers in 2018. The company established cooperation with Google, Microsoft and Intel. And Rockchip is a supplier of SOCs to Chinese white box tablet manufacturer as well as supplying OEMs such as ASUS. The Luckfox Pico series of development board are built around three different SOCs from Rockchip. And they are RV1103 and RV1106 in the variant G1, G2 and G3. So on the left we have the smallest member that is RV1103 G1. And it is having a 64 megabytes of DDR3 SD RAM. Then we have the second member that is RV1106. So we have 06 in place of 03 in the last digit. And we are also having G2 suffix. And this one is having double of this. That means 128 megabytes of DDR3 
SD RAM and finally we are having the big brother that is 1106Z3 and this is having 256 megabytes of DDR3 SD RAM and all of these SOCs are having the same CPU that is ARM Cortex A7 running at 1.2 gigahertz. So here you should notice a thing that the name of this processor is Cortex A7 A and previously when we were using microcontrollers that means ARM based microcontrollers so those were having processors like ARM Cortex M series and this is A series and the M series stands for the microcontroller profile and A series stands for the application profile. And what is the difference between a microcontroller profile and an application profile that we will see in a dedicated video. For the time being we can assume that A series processors are much more powerful compared to M series. So all the STM32 microcontrollers they were based on M series processors that means the processors like M0, M3, M4 or M7 but they were all microcontroller profile of this ARM processor. They were not application profile processors. And then the final thing that all these SOCs are enhanced for AI. That is why they are having an extra hardware that is called an NPU or a neural processing unit. This is also called an AI accelerator or a deep learning accelerator. And the measurement is done in the units called TOPS. And TOPS stands for Tera operations per second. This is similar to the gigahertz that we were using to measure the, the processing speed of a normal CPU. So in case of a normal CPU, we use a term called frequency that is measured in a unit called gigahertz. And these neural processing units, they are measured in Tera operations per second. So first two SOCs that means 1103 and 1106 G2 they are both having an NPU with 0.5 TOPs or Tera operations per second. But the last one that is the big brother 1106 G3 it is having twice the power NPU compared to the first two members that is it is having a 1 TOPS NPU. Now the Luxfox Pico series of development boards, they are available in few different form factors and variants. So on the very left we have the mini model. After that we have this one that is the plus model. And this mini model is extremely small in size having only 11 pins on each side that means 22 pins in total. So this is extremely small Linux board and this is also a very low cost board. So just compare the size of this Linux board to the size of Raspberry Pi or Beagle Bone Black. So it is very small compared to those. But even then it can still run full Linux distribution and it is very powerful for many embedded projects. And this plus model it is having 20 rows of pin on each side. That means a 40 pins in total. So this kind of form factor is very common in the microcontroller world. So this is very similar to a STM32 blue pill or black pill boards. And then we have a pro and max models. The pro and the max model they have a form factor similar to this plus one. But the SOC is different. So here in both the cases we are using the RV1106 G1. But here we are using a bigger SOC that means RV1106. Here you can see the difference in the chip. So this one is having a bigger SOC and this one is having a smaller SOC. So this is 1103 and this is 1106. And finally we have the most powerful member of this family and this one is called Ultra. So we can see that in these two variants we are having a RV1103 G1 SOC. And this SOC is having a 64 MB DDR3 SD RAM. And moving on to the Pro model, this Pro model is having RV1106, the bigger SOC. But still it is using the G2 variant which is the smaller of these two that means G2 and G3. And this G2 model is having only 128 MB of this SD RAM. While this bigger one that means the max one, the form factor is same only the memory is different. 
so this max version it uses rb 1106g3 model which is having a 256 mb that means the double of this pro model sd ram and finally the ultra model it is also having the same soc as the max model this one that is 1106g3 and therefore it is also having 256 mb sd ram now let us compare the npu so these model that means the mini plus and the pro they are having the same npu or neural processing unit of 0.5 tops while this max model which is having a g3 soc they are having a much more powerful npu of one tops now let us compare the networking facilities so the mini is having none that means it is not having any kind of network facilities then we have plus pro and max and all these three models are having ethernet for networking and this is a fast ethernet that is a 100 mbps ethernet and finally the ultra model it is having both ethernet and wireless wi-fi the ultra is available in two variant that is ultra and ultra w so the w model is having this wi-fi or wireless support and along with wi-fi it is also having bluetooth 5 support and one thing that is common in all this board is the MIPI CSI line. So this is actually the camera interface. That means all the Luxfox Pico variants, they have inbuilt camera support. And this camera support is in form of MIPI CSI. And the CSI is having two lanes. And this CSI stands for camera serial interface. This is the latest interface for attaching cameras to SOCs and this uses a serial data transfer and this MIPI or MIPI stands for mobile industry processor interface and there is also a MIPI alliance which is an alliance of various companies that are into the development of things that are used in mobile devices like smartphones and tablets so the members of MIPI alliance they are into fabrication of mobile processors like SOCs they are into developing mobile displays cameras and all so for standardization they have created this standard protocol format that is MIPI CSI uh, there is also a MIPI DSI which connects a mobile processor to a display and another thing we have to see and this this one is ISP so this ISP is a dedicated hardware it is an image processor that takes input from this MIPI CSI 2 or camera the attached camera hardware and it processes the image data before sending it to the CPU so there is a lots of processing required to get raw data from a sensor that is an image sensor and make it a beautiful image so lots of processing is required like auto white balance auto focus auto exposure controls there are lots of algorithm to make the image clear and sharp to do color correction and all that stuff so these kinds of processing is done by this dedicated hardware called isp but the difference here is that these mini and plus or the boards that use 1103 soc they have a isp that can handle 4 megapixels of image data at 30 frames per second on the other hand the pro max and the ultra that that means the boards that are based on 1106 soc they have a high-end isp that can process 5 megapixels of image data at 30 fps so in these two board you can interface cameras up to 4 megapixel that is 4 megapixels of video stream on the other hand on pro max and ultra you can interface better cameras like a 5 megapixel cameras now this ultra version it has some feature that is not present in any of these lower models the first one is the usb host support so here you can see a usb host connector it is a standard usb connector where you can plug standard usb peripherals like a usb mouse or keyboard you can even plug usb cameras you can plug usb hard disk and other mass storage devices like a usb pen drive anything that can support usb you can plug in here and build your application around that product and then we have display interface this is a very important thing here you can see a small connect right next to the camera connector this bigger one so this one is used to connect parallel lcd display modules and none of these lower model they have any kind of display support so this one is an important feature if you need to integrate a display you need this kind of connector here 
so only this ultra model is having a display support and this ultra model has complete audio support that means you can interface a speaker to it directly because it is having a small power amplifier integrated to it and it is also having a sound card that is used to output sound from this board and it can also be used to capture sound using a mic and this is also having an analog mic integrated onto the board small mic uh, so you can easily use this board for any kind of sound and voice capture so that is a great feature now let us take a look at the default storage and the default boot medium so this mini board it is having a default storage of an micro sd card and there is another model called model b which is having an integrated or on board spi nand flash so the NAND flash is soldered here in this blank area, this small area and this NAND flash I see it has only 8 pins like this and it provides a non-volatile storage of about 128 megabytes. So in general all this embedded Linux board they require a large and non-volatile storage medium to keep the operating system images from which the device can boot. That is why we have to understand about the default storage and the boot medium. Then on the plus model, uh, we are having a support for SD card and also an SPI NAND flash just like the mini model. So the default storage medium and the boot medium are similar in these two cases that is in case of mini and plus. They both have SD card and some of the model have integrated SPI NAND flash. And memory is again the same that is 128 megabytes in both the cases. Now let us move on to the Pro and Max models. So they also have SD card support. Here you can see the SD card connector. And here we can plug in a standard micro SD card. And on the SD card we can store the OS image along with our data. We can also use that SD card to store the user application. But one thing I would like to tell you here is that on industrial application I don't recommend using SD card like this on connectors because on industrial floors uh, we have sometimes we have lots of vibration that can loosen this connection and it could lead to the corruption of data in the card. So it is less robust compared to the soldered NAND flash because the NAND flash is rigidly bound or soldered to the PCB board. It is unaffected by any kind of small vibrations on the board. So our, this deployment is much robust compared to a loose SD card hooked into these connectors. If you have used Raspberry Pi before, you must be familiar with this issue. That is the card getting corrupt within a year or so if you deploy to an industrial environment, hazardous environment. Because the Raspberry Pi does not have any built-in or on-board storage. You always have to attach a SD card to the connector. And that is a big problem there. But here that is not the problem. We have integrated SPI NAND flashes here. And the extra thing here in the Pro and the Max model is that it has large capacity and this capacity is double compared to the mini and plus model. It is about 256 megabytes. Then we have the final model, the ultra model and the ultra model is using eMMC in place of SPI NAND flash. So what is eMMC? So eMMC stands for embedded multimedia card. You must be familiar with SD and multimedia card. This MMC card is similar to a SD card. But this one is not a standard SD or MMC card. This is the eMMC card or an embedded MMC card. So what is the difference? So this eMMC is in form of IC chip. It is not like a commercial uh, this uh, car like thing uh, rather it is a chip like thing and this chip is rigidly bound to the PCB it is soldered just like the process so again you have a rigid assembly just like the SPI NAND flash in this cases but in case of EM EMMC you get a huge storage and this is 8 gigabytes but there is a little drawback in the ultra model that it is not having any SD card support it is not having any SD card slot so you cannot add extra storage to this board by supplying an SD card. You have to rely only on the integrated eMMC. So I think I should end this lecture here. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.